Welcome to this tutorial on Salome Meka or Coresta. And our topic today is parametric study using ASTK interface. And we'll take up for uh, illustrating the parametric study, we'll take up a slope stability analysis example. And now first, what is meant by parametric study here? Parametric study here means that in a simulation, um, we need to use various parameters. Say, for example, if I analyze the deformation or stresses in some structural member, say I am doing elastic analysis, my input parameters will be, say, modulus of elasticity, Poisson's ratio, then loads, then boundary conditions, okay? And then if the sum of the parameter or one of the parameter changes, say, modulus of elasticity changes, and we need to, say, study how the deflection of a beam changes with the modulus of elasticity or how it changes with the say moment of inertia of the section. So in that case, that parameter, say moment of inertia, I will keep varying in the simulation and I will see what is the deflection, say, how the deflection varies with the variation of, uh, say, moment of inertia of a beam section. So those kind of studies are called parametric studies and these are very important for um, design purpose. Uh, it is also called sensitivity analysis. Uh, say for example in a geotechnical problem you know that uh, the geotechnical parameters are determined by some laboratory or in situ tests and uh, there are some inherent errors in the method of determining those parameters and if my value of a parameter during the design that is assumed in a design if it changes afterwards then how the system will behave those kind of studies are called sensitivity studies that means how much sensitive the result is to the change of some particular parameter so those kind of studies are called parametric studies and there is a um, interface called ASTK uh, which is uh, which you can invoke either from Codester or from Salomimeka interface and in ASTK it becomes pretty easy to conduct parametric studies and our basic objective is to show how we can use ASTK for doing the parametric study and to illustrate this we are taking a slope stability analysis example we'll try to find out what is the factor of safety of a particular slope, okay? So, for that purpose, uh, I have selected this slope. Uh, it is a homogeneous slope having the slope material and a base layer and the dimensions of the slopes are shown here this width is 20 meter the slope length is also 20 meter and this toe portion is also of 20 meter length and the height of the slope is 10 meter and the depth of the base layer is 5 meter and the unit weight of the soil is 20 kilo newton per meter cube cohesion is 15 kilopascal and phi is 20 degree and this slope is analyzed in this reference uh, programming the finite element method by Smith, Griffith and Margates. 
it's a very good book and we will uh, analyze the same thing using Salome Maker and for that purpose you all know that when we go for slope stability analysis in finite element method we basically use strength reduction method and I think many of you are familiar with strength reduction method for those who are not very accustomed or familiar to this method what we do is in strength reduction method what we do is we gradually reduce the strength parameters of the soil namely the shear strength parameters say C and Phi by some factor this factor is called strength reduction factor in short we are writing as SRF and what we do we analyze the slope for different values of these reduced C and reduced Phi where the reduced C is defined as the C by SRF strength reduction factor and reduced Phi is such that 10 Phi of 10 of reduced Phi must be equal to 10 Phi by the SRF so that Phi reduced is defined as tan inverse of 10 Phi by SRF and first we select a few probable values of SRF which should include the uh, probable value of the factor of safety and then we calculate the reduced C and reduced Phi for each of these SRF values okay and then we analyze the slope with those reduced C and reduced Phi value okay so there will be as many analyzes as the number of SRFs and finally if my SRF is very close to the actual factor of safety of the slope then what happens the deformations or strains increases indefinitely and the slope becomes unstable okay earlier generation of finite element uh, programs uh, when those were used it was assumed that whenever the nonlinear analysis does not converge uh, then the whatever SRF that leads to that non-convergence condition is taken as factor of safety but now due to increased computer power and uh, better and better softwares uh, convergence will be in most of the cases convergence will be achieved and particularly say Salomimeka or Codester uh, convergence can be achieved for almost any material nonlinearity by using uh, elastic stiffness matrix of course the number of uh, iterations increases number of Newtonian iteration for every load step increases to high value in that case but anyway uh, our analysis converges and therefore to indicate failure to study failure what we can do is we can note down the maximum deformation within the slope for each SRF value and when the deflection increases drastically then we reach that factor of safety so the SRF which causes to increase the displacement or strain drastically that value of SRF is taken as the required factor of safety so that's how we do uh, our strength reduction method analysis analyzing slope stability by using strength reduction method okay so next let us see uh, our example
so this is our slope this is the mesh I have already created and uh, going back to this slope geometry uh, let me tell you which I missed earlier uh, let us name these different uh, portion of the slope for grouping this I am calling as top line this as slope line and this as toe line and this is my left support this is my horizontal support or H support and this is my right support okay and according and my actual value of the shear strength parameters and unit weights are these gamma is 20 kilo Newton per meter cube cohesion is 15 kilo Pascal and phi is 20 degree okay now if I use the strength reduction factors then what I can I can find out the various values of uh, reduced C and phi by applying the equations just now we have discussed and I have done it in some small program and you can see that um, these are my SRF values okay these are my SRF values 1, 1.2, 1 1.4 and 1.6 for SRF 1 that means it is the original C and phi value will be there so cohesion is 15,000 Pascal and phi is 20 degree and psi which is the um, dilatancy angle for more Coulomb uh, constitutive model is taken as 5 degree okay and when SRF is 1.2 I have divided this original cohesion by 1.2 to get 1200 12,500 Pascal similarly phi becomes 16.873 degree and so on so these values are already calculated the reduced cohesion reduced phi and reduced psi all right now we are we need to use these values for analyzing the slope these values of c and phi for analyzing the slope so this is my mesh this is a quadratic mesh I have taken it is uh, fine enough mesh okay and these are my various groups say for example if I show you the base layer these are my group of nodes uh, let me show the group of uh, faces say this is my base layer okay and this is my top layer similarly my support horizontal support is this horizontal support is this okay then um, right support is this this white line then left support is this line I cannot see it because um, the axis is covering it anyway so that's how my various groups are defined already in the mesh all right and uh, mesh file is uh, stored here all right now uh, the analysis can also be done by using ester study as usual as usual by invoking the ester study all right ester study here okay but in that case I will have to do many many such analysis and it will be time consuming so instead what we can do is we can use ASTK to invoke ASTK what do we do 
we click here in tools menu then plugins we have code tester then run ASTK if you select this then we get uh, there is some information okay it uh, says that the local host is not defined so the present machine is taken as local machine you say ok then this is my screen for ASTK ok ASTK is a easy interface to set up the analysis by telling the system which one should be our com file which one should be our um, mesh file etc etc okay now before using ASTK let us see first the let us first see the com file first okay this is my com file which was obtained which was generated by Esther study for some value of cohesion and psi and phi okay cohesion then dilation angle and angle of internal friction which will be used for defining the material all right now when we use directly um, ester study what happens is in the more coulomb parameters in definition of material defi material what we would have got we would have got angle dilation equal to say 5 degree if my SRF is 1 cohesion is 15,000 phi equal to 20 so those values would have been written now I have modified this com file in terms of writing these values in terms of some variables alright I am calling the dilation angle as psi cohesion as capital C and phi as phi okay and I am giving the value of C, Psi and Phi initially as defined in this COM file. Alright? You can even put this any value C equal to 0, Psi equal to 0, Phi equal to 0 also when I use parametric studies in um, using ASTK. Okay? So this is a usual com file for analyzing the slope for self weight because the more coulomb material is used we are using uh, static nonlinear analysis okay I have divided uh, I have uh, defined some list of times okay list of real and list of time as usual and here in the defi list inst what we have done is <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I have uh, used the automatic time step cutting in case of non-convergence alright so these things you must be familiar with these methods if you are not familiar you can see my earlier videos uh, discussing nonlinear analysis of a geotechnical slope or slope material using um, Salomimeka. And then we have used a ramp function for applying the weight. And these are my boundary conditions. This is my self weight, which is gravity. And I have defined the uh, row of the material already row is this because gamma divided by 9.81 will give me rho in kz per meter cube okay 
and then what we have done here as usual we have applied the self weight and the boundary condition and in the nonlinear static analysis that non-line the first part 25 percent of the total weight is applied assuming the material as elastic so comportment is elastic here and the remaining part the behavior or material behavior is taken as more coulomb okay and the more coulomb parameters we have already defined in the material definition angle of dilation is psi angle of cohesion is c angle of internal friction is phi and their values are written here for FOS equal to 1, SRF equal to 1 and then as usual we are doing the analysis, we are calculating the stresses and strains by calchon and we are writing the results in med file as well as in tabular form for displacements. Okay? This is necessary so that we can draw the curve that we have just now discussed if you remember uh, this curve in order to draw this curve I will need the displacement to plot displacement versus SRF so I need to read the displacement and therefore I am writing the displacement here okay in a file and I am writing the displacement at the final instant of the analysis all right final instant of the analysis which is the 68th step so nume ordinary is 60 I can also say time instant inst equal to say 20 my inst to a maximum value of time was 20 so anyone you can do and we are noting down the maximum value and minimum value. So value max is V, yes, and value minimum is yes. And the unit is 80. And the uh, result RMED file has a unit of 2. Okay? So these unit numbers are important to be noted down. Okay? To set up the analysis in our uh, ASTK. Okay? and as usual I think our med file mesh file is unit is 20 so let us note down those uh, values uh, here okay let us note down that units uh, logical units my med file Made file was 20, then R made file result file in made format is 2, and my data file, tabular file, text file, uh, resu file was 80. Let me verify once again. Yes, um, made file is 2 and data file is 80. So fine, we have noted them. This notation is important, this noting down is important so that we don't make any mistake in setting up the ASTK, uh, setting up the analysis using ASTK. Okay? So now let us go for then ASTK again. Well, before going to ASTK, what we need to do for parametric studies, we need to make a text file whose extension is 
distr distrib that means distribution in coresta jargon the parametric study is called distribution study so we need to open a file text file you can give any name to this text file but the extension must be distr i have already created this file to save time and the file format is like this what we need to do is we need to write valet equal to then one br bracket and it is to be ended in another bracket okay and then we write the factor keyword underscore f then the various combinations of c phi and psi for different SRF values are listed here. You remember for the first case my cohesion was 15,000, phi was 20 degree, psi is 5. Okay? So that's why in this first case I am writing C equal to 15,000, phi equal to 20, psi equal to 5. And remember these C, Pi and Psi were my variables used in the COM file to define the soil material. Is not it? You see this soil material. Dilation angle I am calling it as Psi, cohesion as capital C and angle as angle of internal friction as capital Phi. So, I must use those notations, those values, whatever are the values, psi, c and uh, title case phi, okay? Those must be used in giving the values, those variables must be used, that is important. And for SRF equal to 1.2, my cohesion value was 12,500 phi was 16.873 and psi was 4.1699 so I am writing those values in the second case okay so like this we are writing all these values in this format valle equal to one bracket the next bracket should be below few lines and within this we write these lines all right now while setting up this study in ASTK we will be using this distrib file I have named it as param.distr so this file must be available in the directory so in the directory what I have to have I have to have the med file for the mesh I have to have the com file where I have written the I have defined the material in terms of the variables whose values are given in the distrib file okay and also since it is a parametric study there will be number of results to store those number of results I must have a directory already created you can use any name for this directory okay I have called it all studies and right now it is empty all right now what I will do I will invoke my ASTK from here tools plugins code ester run ASTK <coughs> so I get this um, ASTK interface the first thing I need to do is I need to tell the base part that means the directory where I have all the files necessary for that I can use this thing there will be a warning which will which says that in the file names or folder names there cannot be any blank if there is blank then instead of a blank you can use underscores okay 
So in my home directory it has got this file. It is giving me some warning. I say OK. Now it is opening my home directory and let me go to the required directory. Every time it is giving me the warning. So this is my directory, then parametric studies, then this is my study, okay? So this directory will be my base part. I will say okay. So this is my base part, all right? Now what I will have to do, I will have to tell the system which is the com file, which is the mid file, etc., etc. Okay, for that I will create a new file by using this um, this icon. Here, when I touch this icon, you can see that at the bottom, uh, at the bottom, it is written. You can see at this place when I touch this, insert a new entry in the list. Okay, so I click this. First, the com file type is coming. If you click here, all different types of file which can be used in ASTK are coming in the uh, drop down menu. So first is my com file. So I will now I will come here and then I will open that directory and my stage1.com was my file. So I am saying OK. okay? This is some uh, bug where it has come down and it has gone up I will I can delete this line like this now again I will open a new entry then first I will give the mid file okay so I should use a mid okay a mid file type then I write I click here, left click here, then go to this and I give the mid. This is my mid file name. OK. And this is my, uh, again this has come unnecessarily, so let me remove it. So this is my logical unit 20. Let me check if I have correct logical unit. I noted it down. So mid file is 20, we have seen here mid file is 20, mid file unit is 20, so my ASTK uh, thing is OK. So this is 20 is OK. And you see this is a data file, this both com file and mid file is will be used as data in the analysis so this d column is ticked automatically this d means data this r means record okay that means where i will write it write the results so again i need um, the message file okay so the type is mws so mess so I will give some name it is not existing so I will use dots slash that means in this directory I will use say parametric parametric dot mews this is my name of mess file and this its unit by default is 6 and it is a record file where the system will write the things, write the messages. So this R is automatically clicked. All right. Then I need to have my RMED file, right? RMED file. And I will write this as a race 02 dot armed dot armed this is again record by default armed file has a unit of 80 but in our case it is 2 so let us let me make 
it to manually all right so this is my armed file then I need to have this uh, data file where maximum deflection will be written so I again enter a new thing then this will be data file that file okay that file or I can also use resu resu and this is my uh, say depl dot resu the or depl dot out will also do okay let me make it that file and let me make the type as that and let me call it dpl dot out okay and my unit is uh, 80 so let me manually correct it to 80 and this is again record okay and then I need to have one more entry for the this trip file right so my type of file is distr and here I will open this dist file param.distr okay and its unit is 0 by default okay again this bug has come into picture so let me remove it and it is a data file again it is already existing so this part is uh, ticked and then to read to write all the results in the directory I need to have one more directory definition and in French directory is called uh, report year uh, the actual pronunciation I have forgotten I think it is uh, repertoire repertoire something like that so I will call this as uh, since I have already opened the directory I will open this and I will point to this all studies directory and this is the repi uh, repi repi again its unit is zero okay so this one has come unnecessarily so let me remove it so these are my files necessary to be set up and you see this repi is both data and record is clicked because this repi is already there but I should remove this uh, this data tick uh, I should untick it so that it writes there alright now I can save all this this setup as it is asking me save the current environment yes it will be in the same base directory I will call it say parametric I will write the date July say 02 02 2021 dot ASTK ASTK the file extension is ASTK okay so okay once I save it what I can do is if I want to repeat the analysis or the analysis I had some problem I had to fix something then again to repeat the setup I need not write all these things I can just open say what I will do just let me show you since I have saved I can close it really quick yes 
now what I can do is I can just open my file from the directory appropriate directory once again like earlier case parametric study mesh now this is my ASTK file when I say ok all these things are automatically coming all right now what I will do is I will since it is a huge study I will give uh, more memory I have 32 GB so I will give 16 GB and I will give time as because it is quadratic mesh so the number of degree of freedom will be quite high so therefore I give say 3 hours 15 minutes and then I can use various versions available of Codester I have from Salome Maker I have 14.4 I have 14.4 installed as Codester in my system you may not have it you may have only this one if you have uh, installed only Salome Maker not Codester and I have also installed 14.6 version of Codester so I will use this 14.6 and I will write here interactive follow up this means when I run this study uh, I will get one terminal where the progress I can monitor it will keep on uh, writing the message file basically okay so my study is uh, set up these things were not set up initially all right um, let me save it again because now these are correct and then I have to if I if I am doing a parametric studies I should go for options then there is a distrib option I should say yes distrib yes ok alright then let me save it save this environment again ok now I will start running the study run it is confirming me that it is distribution is yes following options have been defined confirm I say yes now my study has started all right and I will have four analyses it will take quite a long time so let me pause the video and I'll come back once these results are out okay A welcome back to this tutorial on parametric studies using ASTK or Codester and we were analyzing a slope for its stability using strength reduction method and finally our results are out and you see this is one screenshot of the ASTK interactive terminal where these different uh, calculations are carried on and this part shows the time I think I should uh, slightly enlarge it for your benefit these are the times necessary in seconds for every calculation and you can see that these calculations take quite a bit of time and as we approach as our strength reduction factor approaches towards the factor of safety actual factor of safety this time necessary increases because the convergence becomes more and more slower and therefore many a times in slope stability analysis uh, we may have to repeat uh, the analysis with some new selected factor of safeties or SRFs so that convergence is achieved and 
Also, we may need to adjust the analysis settings like number of maximum number of global iteration and then automatic uh, step downing of time. Okay, so those uh, features of code extra needs to be adjusted for a particular problem so that we get the convergence. Uh, near the actual factor of safety. However, what uh, my experience says is that although Salome Maker or other softwares, the new generation softwares are very, very sophisticated uh, in terms of algorithms for convergence, um, still when we exceed the factor of safety, we do not uh, achieve convergence for very large number of uh, iterations and also for very long uh, time duration of analysis. For example, uh, in this slope, I took an SRS, SRF of 1.7 and the convergence was not possible and therefore what I did, I took a few uh, additional factor of safeties or SRFs uh, like 1.6 and 1.65 and after adjusting the number of global number of iteration Newtonian iteration to about 12,000 which is very large uh, I achieved the convergence in this SRF of 1.65 all right so depending on the value of SRF and how close it is to the failure, uh, we may need to increase the number of Newtonian iteration and we may also adjust the parameters related to automatic uh, time step cutting okay, in the analysis. So these are some of the adjustment necessary uh, for slope stability analysis. So once our results are out, uh, what we should do is uh, we can go to the folder which we created during the setting up of our study and these are different calculations for each set of parameters and we gave originally uh, seven calculations and they are serially named as calculation 1, calculation 2, calculation 3, etc. However, during the actual execution in the ASTK, they, they need not be serially taken up by the system. It may happen that calculation 6 will be done first, then it may pick up calculation 2 to be executed next. Okay? So that seriality is controlled by system not by the user. However, once you get the results, uh, what we should do is we should always check whether our results are fine or not, whether the analysis has been successfully over or not. And for that purpose, whenever you open one of the calculation folders, you will get some ver some some uh, uh, files whatever you have set up this was our data file uh, for recording the maximum and minimum displacements and this was our armed file okay and this was my message file and this is my command file so we should always first open the message file and we should go to the bottom and see whether the exit, exit code is zero or not so this is exit code is zero, therefore uh, analysis was fine. And in the beginning you see the values of C, Psi and Phi used here. So these were my original unreduced values, so this is for SRF equal to 1 and that's why we have got it in calculation 1. So accordingly you know that which calculation uh, relates to which SRF value. Okay? 
and we can see the result in data format and I have asked to write down the mesh file so this is the mesh file in ester format and then finally the values of displacement at the final instant of calculation that is 22nd has been um, recorded here maximum dx maximum dy minimum dx minimum dy okay and uh, also the nodes where they have occurred these values were obtained is also um, reported here okay so these results for all the SRF will be used to draw the plot of displacement maximum displacement versus SRF at a later time okay this now let us see the results um, of our analysis uh, I told you that we had recorded the maximum displacements nodal displacements maximum nodal displacements and minimum nodal displacements in a data file for each of the analysis and by picking up those maximum displacements for different calculations different values of SRF uh, this is our plot of maximum displacement versus SRF here we are plotting the X displacement I write it as DX in terms of codester terminology so this is the plot of DX maximum DX with SRF and we see that beyond the SRF of 1.6 the displacement suddenly increases to a very large value and therefore we can take the uh, factor of safety actual factor of safety of the system as 1.6 okay so that's how we can find out the factor of safety by plotting uh, displacement versus uh, SRF value so we can note it down now that um, this is my factor of safety okay and this FOS is equal to 1.6 so this is the result of our slope stability analysis all right and uh, let us compare our results with uh, the result of Smith et al that we have already discussed earlier and they have got also uh, a similar curve of maximum displacement versus SRF and they stopped analyzing at SRF of 1.6 and they found that the SRF is uh, somewhat uh, maybe at about 1.55 or so uh, as per this calculation and the same slope was also analyzed by Bishop and Morgan Stern uh, in their publication in 1960 and they got approximately 1.58 which is uh, marked here in Griffith this is as per Griffith's solution okay Smith et al solution so this is our factor of safety as per the present simulation and this is the factor of safety given by Smith et al in their book and we see that our factor of safety is pretty close to Bishop and Morgan Stern okay Morgan Stern now let us see the deformation how the deformation has taken place this is the slope displacement at the verge of failure uh, as per Smith et al and this is our simulation at SRF of 1.6 and you see this uh, shadow is the undeformed geometry of the uh, undeformed geometry of the slope and this is 
the deformed geometry and we are showing here the displacement dx and this this clearly shows that this is the failure surface generated failure surface okay and the geometry of failure surface is very very similar to uh, Smith et al's analysis and here also this portion has come out of the original geometry and here also it has come out this uh, difference is because of basically the difference of uh, scale or enlargement <coughs> and uh, they have plotted the vector diagram of the uh, displacement and when we um, when we see the kind of deformation that is taking place from the uh, warped geometry this is the deformed geometry we see that the deformation pattern is very very similar all right and this was our result for our additional uh, simulation of the slope at an SR, at, a, at an SRF of 1.65 and this is the deformation pattern in uh, with this SRF so actually it has already failed so uh, this is uh, this has shown a huge deformation even up to the base of the base layer of the slope okay so that's how we can we have seen that our analysis is pretty well uh, compared along with the Smith et al's solution however we have seen that displacement at SRF of 1.6 obtained by Smith uh, et al is nearly 38 centimeter and in our case at 1.65 it is slightly more than 40 uh, mm this is yes this is around uh, 38 mm I am sorry okay because this is 40 mm so uh, we see that our our slope is slightly more stiffer than their slope that may be because of uh, various reasons uh, what I can see is that we have adopted the value of gamma C and Phi from Smith et al in our solution however for more Coulomb um, material model we need the modulus of elasticity we need new okay and we need also the angle of dilation, dilation that is psi and these values were obtained uh, E and nu were obtained by uh, different empirical correlations what I did was I correlated phi to the corrected SPT value and from SPT value I can find the value of E and new also based on the type of soil uh, I had assumed about 0.3 I, I, if I remember correctly so these values may be different from Smith et al's uh, solution because Smith et al have not reported the value of E new and uh, psi angle of dilation okay and this may be the reasons of this small difference between these two analyses okay and I think uh, with this we can conclude that the slope stability analysis slope stability analysis of this uh, well analyzed slope by using Salome Mika and ASTK uh, gives very realistic result and also um, we have seen how we can use ASTK for running parametric studies uh, using Codestra or Salome Mika. Now what we will see is how to uh, let us see some uh, post processing of our results that we have got uh, uh, to see 
how we got these plots etc and how we can use a study for that let us see okay so for post processing we will be using our salome maker and you are all familiar that uh, salome maker has this parabis module which is basically a uh, modification of uh, para view for uh, reading the made file our made files and if you want more sophisticated plots etc from the post processing then we can use paravis module but for quick post processing uh, this version of salome maker 2019 also we can use the post processor that is available along with ester study okay so what we do now is we'll uh, we will invoke the ester study module in Salome Maker and to open our already available uh, RMED file what we need to do is in this data file of the current case in this uh, screen in this part of the window we should select the current case and we can right click then I get this menu set up directories connect to remote servers post process the made file results and assign default file names now we will select this um, we will select this menu post process using made results file then it gives me a warning that it must be in made format our results are already in made format made format so we tell it ok and then we select the uh, result for the SRF of 1.6 which is this one then I click open and it is initializing the post processor for loading the result file this takes a little bit of time now this is my result now if I want to see on XY plane let me do like this and this is my displacement displacement result and this was already if I select something else you can see that this is in bold which means that um, it is being displayed okay now here I have the menu for selection of magnitude and DX and DY component and if I right click here I can warp with amplification factor the auto amplification factor is very large maybe we can use 50 times X and then if I press this play button the whole uh, displacements at various time steps time instants will be shown gradually uh, like a movie so let us press this so you see how the deformation is changing with time here we see the time times in seconds these are my analysis steps and this is the result of magnitude of displacement and this is um, about 40 mm result right if I see the DX then I get uh, this result I have to play the play button once again and then we get the result for DX and this is for SRF equal to 1.65 okay I can see all other parameters like uh, say sigma NOEU if I see this then let us see how the normal stress in X direction is increasing with uh, time with loading in fact and this is the final condition of the uh, normal stress in X direction SIXX and we may be more interested in SIXY that is the shear stress 
and if I plot, if I play the play button now, then we can see that this is the result, okay? And these are sigma NOEU, equivalent nodal uh, stress, all right? Similarly, I can see shear strain, FC L no, and this is my EPXX, and this is my EPXY. Let me put the push the play button, and you can see that we have some bands of failure planes developed. Here you see this is my failure plane development from the two towards higher up because here the um, EPXY that is the shear strain is maximum as per this scale 3.7 into the to minus 3 that is the strain and this side it is negative that means it is in anti-clockwise direction um, because when this is moving down when this is moving down then this portion stress strain is of course let me sorry uh, this portion the strain is clockwise right because it is moving like this uh, it is moving like this this is my positive direction of x so it is towards positive direction of x and in this portion it is towards negative direction of x um, so epxy means uh, it is on x plane in y direction so this is in negative y direction okay and this is in positive y direction the strain positive y direction means uh, if you assume a um, strain element, material element, uh, let me show you uh, in the other screen. So you see from our uh, usual sign convention of shear stress and shear strain, if the shear stress is such that it tries to rotate the element in clockwise direction, we call that stress and strain as positive. So in positive shear stress, uh, a 2D element will deform like this, and in negative shear stress, a 2D element will deform like this. Now, coming back to our uh, strain direction here, you see in this portion the strain is positive because my material is coming downward okay and on the y plane uh, that the direction is clockwise right clockwise rotation kind of thing similarly here there is a slippage uh, in this portion and this is my negative so as a reaction this portion of the soil will be trying to rotate in anti-clockwise direction okay and therefore it is uh, negative so that's how shear strain uh, directions can be interpreted and you see that um, this 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 contour say show uh, shows that there is a shear band formed failure planes have formed in this zone okay at this factor of safety all right so this is how we can use uh, post processing module of uh, ST study for finding the various um, important quantities and here for your information I am just saying if you click here uh, it says save a movie of the current animation so you can save a movie file for saving the current animation and you can take a screenshot from here okay 
So like this, uh, the post-processing can be done much more easily uh, in this module than ParaView module or ParaVis module. But uh, in some more sophisticated post-processing like plotting uh, the displacement uh, at a particular time uh, uh, or at a particular section over time, we may need to go for this ParaVis module. So with this, we come to the end of this uh, presentation. And I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. And you can now take up your own parametric studies for different purposes, OK? And uh, particularly for slope stability analysis, this parametric study using ASTK can be easily set up and if you have liked this video if you like this video please uh, press the like button and if you want to uh, be notified about similar videos in future uh, then you may subscribe to my channel okay thank you very much